So we want to provide a technology that allows cars to drive people some of the time. Now we're not proposing that you'll, put it, you'll have a car with a single button, no steering wheel that says go. That's not part of our, our game. We're thinking that cars will offer people autonomy some of the time. So let's imagine you've just bought yourself a new car and you've paid a little bit of extra money that allows the car to drive itself on your behalf. And you're driving home from work and that machine doesn't offer you that autonomy. But the next day or the day after it might because you've shown the car how you drive. So in that traffic jam the car offers you autonomy because it's understood that the environment it's in is understandable in the context of its memories, knows where it is, feels it's safe, and you decide to take up the car's offer on autonomy. And I really think that we should be aiming, and we have a, a clear goal, for autonomy for 100 quid on a car. That's a really great thing to, to aim for. Our car looks quite different. We, we haven't got the 3D laser spinning on the roof. Um, we've been pushing on much smaller, cheaper sensors uh, around the car, a much more lower profile kind of idea, because really we do need to solve the engineering challenges of not relying on expensive sensors, but relying on cheap sensors, but doing some really smart things with those cheap sensor feeds, and there's a great community doing that, and it's great that the UK is now in that. Cost is a, is a major thing. I mean, I, I think that it's, it's not credible to have the 3D sensors on the top, and of course that's not going to be the long-term vision of, of, of Google, and they are trailblazers in this. They've done many miles autonomous, and, and that's great, and they've shown that it's possible to do it, and uh, there are legal changes that happen in the States because of that, so that's a really good thing. And I think that's opened up the field for technology like ours to get involved in this domain. What's next for us is to knock another zero off the cost. So at the moment, the navigation gear that we've got on here is about five grand. So next, it would be nice to do that for 500 quid, so a laptop and some cameras. Again, leveraging this idea of that the cars know the 3D structure of their environment, but then doing that with low-cost cameras, that gets very interesting hard, and that's why we want to do it here. We, you know, we, we can now drive around Bedbrook, and we've been doing so for a while. That's exciting, so certainly looking forward to getting an opportunity to go onto the UK's roads. Bigger question is when are we going to see this kind of stuff in commercial products? Um, well, we're starting to see it soon. It's not going to be you know, a sudden day where suddenly there's cars at steering wheels. You know, the cars will be reversing themselves into parking lots. Well, they're doing that already. You know, soon they'll be doing traffic jams and in limited cases offering people autonomy. And it's going to be a, you know, a, a sort of a sliding scale, a bit more every year. And I think that's, I think that's really, really exciting.